to have Colonel Indrajit sir with us again, and on a very important and interesting topic that is a cyber citizenship. How? Uh, what are the different things we need to to prepare for the next era? Because all things are going on online. So today, sir, we are lighting us upon the many things. We we'll discuss many things on the cyber citizenship, and we can also bring out. Uh, we have a one uh, QA. session for the blockchain purpose also if you have any query any doubt regarding the blockchain you can discuss with sir as his, uh, sir is also working on the smart city and blockchain and he has done a very wonderful work in these areas so now without much delay i request sir to take over the session and lighting us upon the cyber citizenship sir i heartily welcome you at vvi camp yeah uh thank you dr vishal and uh, uh, thank you dr huda it's been a really a pleasure uh, to be with uh, you all today and uh, uh, taking uh, next second lecture uh, in this ftb and uh, i understand you you all had uh, really wonderful uh, you know uh, lectures one after the other and uh, uh, the things have been very interesting and uh, today what we are trying to talk of uh, is Uh, something which we have not been touching upon uh, either in our academia or uh, in our daily life but definitely we being uh, you know very much uh, part of it and uh, we are you know uh, embracing this technology every day in and day out and uh, this is what we have been doing uh, like we all are citizen of india we know that you know we have the set boundaries to us we have uh, the rules to us we behave with the rules Uh, behave to the rules, and uh, we have the kind of fundamental rights, uh, primary rights, your you know secondary rights. So uh, we know the limits of how we you know live in this country, and uh, uh, you know if you break a rule, definitely uh, there is something wrong uh, which is there. So uh, we are aware of those kind of things altogether, right? But when it comes to the internet. uh how many of us have really thought that you know are there any rules to internet or we just went on to the internet and started browsing the internet and you know uh, going about it uh, finding data using data abusing data you know stealing data or you know uh, doing all those things which are warranted and which are unwarranted uh, on the internet and today we are seeing a lot of cyber crimes happening today we see a uh, lot of you know frauds happening you know people trolling there and there are a lot of new terminologies also which have come up all together in last uh, couple of years and and uh, we are all tribute to those kind of things but uh, oh, how many of us really felt that there are supposed to be some rules to bind us together on the internet or the digital media as to what all it should entail to keep us secure while we are there so today that's the aim of the topic what we are going to be talking or talking about is a cyber citizenship the kind of citizenship we have in the physical era the citizenship when we have it in the cyber space would be the cyber citizenship and if there also we are living in and out and just imagine the number of hours of uh, yours you may be spending in front of the screen in front of the laptops or internet using the internet so that's the way we are today right and i should be talking of what the cyber citizenship is all about uh, how we are different from the next gen which is coming in the gen uh, the gen z what we talk of and how we were what's uh, the the rights and the rules of the citizenship what it should be all together and uh, something i'll touch upon the cyber bullying uh, then for uh, and those lines right so if you take a moment and uh, just think it to yourself as to how much of time you spend daily on a screen okay and give it a very sincere answer to yourself as to how much of time you are using and especially you would have really realized that uh, covid has started you have started having a much more you know longer screen hours than before okay. uh while i'll not touch upon our lives uh, i will try, try to touch upon 
the lives of the teenagers who are much more affected by the screen time, right? So just think as to how many hours they would be spending in front of the screen or the mobile phones. They're, they're all glued to the mobile phone these days. And uh, it, it becomes a problem for the parents to handle at times. And to tell you a fact, you know, after the COVID has started moving in, uh, that's in the month of February, March, uh, the screen time has gone phenomenally very high. So some of the kids are going up to almost 10 to 12 hours of screen time, right? So that is the kind of screen time they are, you know, uh, uh, using. To tell you about who are the participants of uh, the cyberspace, so there are two kind of people who survive on the cyberspace. One, other digital natives. And second, other digital immigrants. Make the things understandable. Uh, I'll touch upon the digital immigrants first, right? And the digital immigrants are the ones who are not born in this digital era, but have been later being fascinated with this technology and we adapted to this kind of technology. And that's us, right? And uh, the other part of the people who are there in the cyberspace, they are the digital natives. The digital natives are the ones who are born in the digital world. And technology is an integral part of their life. And that's what we, we are being seen day in and day out, right? We are seeing, you know, the moment a, a kid is, being, uh, is growing up, you, you, he's being previewed to so many screens. He's uh, accessing the internet when he's just age of one, uh, six months, you know, even uh, uh, one and a half year, two years, and uh, as we go along, right? So the distinction between both of them, uh, digital natives are multitasking, they're parallel thinking, they're multimedia uh, kind of guys, and they have the multiple resources to themselves. And if you think of yourself, uh, you have the limited resources, you're more textual oriented, you're sequential thinking, and you have the single task in mind. So while a digital native is very much averse to the new kind of technology, whereas you try to adapt to this technology, we are still learners in this technology. Right? And case in point, you give a mobile phone to your kid, you know, he'll just take half an hour to find out the features, which will take you almost, you know, two to three days to do it. That's a start point. You can just imagine how the digital natives are and how the digital immigrants are. And uh, what we are seeing right now, uh, when it, if it comes to a digital society, and we are all the citizens of this digital society, uh, we create a lot of social network data. You know, we use it very extensively. We use social media. We uh, generate huge amount of data, and uh, and a sort of collective storytelling when it comes to the digital society. So we are both part of it. So no one is less or more, but yes, they have you know come into uh, the technology much easier than us. Coming on to who are your millennials today? We have been talking of the millennial words, you know, quite often, and we we uh, touch upon that particular point. So these are the guys who are highly connected. You know, they play video games very often, uh, and you you know it, the amount of games which they download today, uh, either on the mobiles or or uh, uh, your laptops, is phenomenal. They have number of handheld devices. You know, almost uh, average of seven to be precise right they use instant messaging they use social networking site they easily adapt and adopt to any technology and they're the content generators right and that content is huge in, in number when we talk of it so some bit of uh, you know numbers which i would like to you know uh, share with you what we have today is the millennials, you know, they have around 78% of teens have cell phones. And almost half of them own smartphones today. Right? That's a huge number. 
and one in four are still mostly the kind of the internet users and this number is growing in india as well so though we have around 500 million internet users this number is growing in india and 23 percent of teens have tablets 81 percent use social networking sites very you know aggressively and what we have been seeing the last three four days you know uh, most of the indians 120 million of the people in india were using uh, tiktok very often right that's a huge number if you look at it and uh, believe me it must not be you or me i never had a tiktok in my mobile ever so who are the people who are who would be using it these are the teens right uh, then 8 to 18 year old you know these are the guys who devote more than 7 hours and 38 minutes for entertainment and using the social media all across the day and this period has almost gone to 12 hours now when I am talking of it for the COVID right so that's quite alarming so how do the digital natives you know they are communicating uh, though they may be you know sitting next to each other but they still prefer to communicate using the apps uh, communicate using the digital media uh, they would be tweeting they would use sms they would use you know uh, the kind of insta messages uh, they would be using other group messages so there are a huge number of digital applications which are there so while they are very close to each other right on the social media on the digital platform they are miles apart when it comes to you know talking to each other or sitting to each other or interacting with each other that is the beauty of the digital space it's kind of you know that interact bring the unknown people together at the same time distancing the people who are close to each other right and some of the uh, dis uh, apps which are being used by the digital natives you know just to name a few uh, Instagram is quite famous and 90% uh, of the users are under 25 years of age okay and uh, uh, they are the ones who aggressively share the videos photos right uh, on the Instagram and uh, then is the Twitter uh, though Twitter is not pretty famous with the teens it's more famous with the middle-aged people so 42% of users are around 15 to 17 years old and 32 are from 18 to 29 years of age YouTube you find a lot of youtubers coming up uh, post COVID also uh, that's quite uh, a huge number and there are almost 1 billion users each month watching 6 billion hours of video okay and uh, everybody is reach uh, the kind of uh, uh, the viewership or the viewer age is from 18 to 49 then a very popular social media app uh, is the Facebook what we use and 88 percent of adults age from 19 to 29 use Facebook and this is varying in country to country in India also it's got you know different numbers Snapchat it's around 65 percent of users between 18 and 34 years of age and uh, LinkedIn, of course, is around 61% of users fall in the age range of 30 to 64. Then you have a Reddit, that's around 41% of users between 18 and 29. And of course, the Spotify, right? People use it uh, uh, for the music. So my point in telling you on this slide is they use different medias for sharing different content. And the content is pretty huge. That's why you know, the amount of content which is being generated by each one of them is phenomenal. So when I come to my latest slides, I will tell you uh, what is the actual outcome of this content. And you will agree with me as to you know, when we generate a content, where is the content going? Okay, so we will touch upon the data privacy and the data security part of it uh, and the data governance uh, if required. So uh, we'll touch those issues as well. Right. But 
there are some kind of you know the, the negatives of the social media though i told you that fantastic we are all connected and all the all the teams are connected all the natives are connected right but the pitfalls are that 88% of private sexual images have been stolen by pornography websites and posted to the social media sites okay. this is growing every day and, and there's a problem there's a problem with the child pornography on, on the internet today 29% of the relationships involving sex crime were initiated on social networking site and what we are seeing today most of the divorces also do happen just because of the uh, no the internet or the or the distributed platform okay 25% of teen between age of 11 to 17 have forwarded a sex message and 68% of girls were asked to send a picture whereas 42% of boys have been asked to send pictures and and this is so important so if and what we saw last month boys locker room in delhi it was the same kind of case which was there okay. so uh, these are not the numbers these are the the kind of things which are happening and we have to be very much aware of what are the facts right and something uh, very interesting which is there is that in 100% of the cases teens are the victims of sexual predators and have gone willingly to meet them you know uh, offline or in person and, and to tell you a case in point this happened in gurgaon a girl age 9 year she you know kind of managed to get a social media account on a facebook or something she got in touch with a student post me student from her school and they started texting then after after couple of exchange of te uh, text of couple of days you know the boy he said he's in class 9 he wants to meet her and uh, despite the girl refusing to do so finally agreed and one fine day when uh, they were supposed to meet she went along with the driver and he said okay i'll be in a blue shirt or t-shirt or whatever and when she went to that place she found a 40 year old man standing right so these are the sexual predators who actually exploit the digital platform like this and it is all growing every day right? and if you look at the registered sex offenders of us they were almost 7,47,408 unfortunately in india you know uh, people don't really understand what is a cyber bullying uh, what is a sex offenders uh, how, who are the sexual predators uh, that's why cases are not getting reported in india unfortunately you know every police station you know comes it back and says that we don't have a cyber crime cases not withstanding our rules are not so strong today or the people are not very aware as to how to report of these kind of uh, cases so there's a, there's a kind of a you know dichotomy there's kind of problem here uh, uh, which needs to be addressed by the cyber law and you know what we are seeing today is teens are willing to meet with strangers and 16% of teens consider meeting someone they only talk online and 8% have actually met someone they knew online okay and this is all happening today and 75% uh, of children are willing to share personal information online about themselves and their family in exchange for goods and services and that's why you find you know on social media you know people are kind of putting all kind of posts there not realizing as to who are the which, which are the eyes which are watching this information and what is the outcome of that particular information right so what we see is the digital natives who are there on the net today are uniquely susceptible to frauds a lot of them and there are a lot of frauds to happen day in and day out 
and this makes you know the job of all the fraudsters easy and uh, they fall prey to their generosity of you know sharing information and falling prey to them right uh, what we see one thing is interesting is that the digital native are also very cautious when making payments online and uh, they expect brands to take responsibility for trust and safety they they are not bothered about what's happening there they they think if it is facebook then the facebook should be responsible for the trust and safety right and uh, you know and these brands would do well to pay attention so that's how what uh, they are you know anticipating and uh, the distributors are changing the way we live and work today and we see a lot of changes in and out of the digital society digital phase how the digital natives are actually living on the internet or the uh, or the digital media so what we practically see you know uh, while all of us we are the digital immigrants you know when you had gone or when you were you were growing up we would we were definitely looking in for a newspaper to read okay and uh, try to find out what's happening all around where are the digital natives today the first thing they get up wake uh, and when they wake up they grab their mobile phone to know what's happening on the social media that's the kind of you know difference what we have that that's a kind of era which has changed over a period of time and as the internet has become an indispensable tool for everyday life that and it's important than ever to dust off the concept of citizenship and apply it to the online world it's very important now because i am not very sure that how many of us uh, you know in the class right now uh, would be aware of uh, what is the digital media all about uh, what are the citizenship all about what are the concepts of the citizenship when we talk of online digital society all about right so the definition of the cyber citizenship to sorry so citizenship is the rights privileges and duties conferred on a member of a society and that's what we are doing it in a in a in a physical life we have like i told you we have the fundamental rights we have the rights we have the privileges we have the duty to do this towards the society and it includes both protections that's a bill of rights and the duty that's obeying the law contributing towards the community and that's what we have been doing in our physical life today, right whereas the cyber citizenship is the rights privileges and the responsibilities required of internet or internet and cellular network users so the the difference between the physical citizenship and the cyber citizenship there is a total change what we are going to do okay whereas you have the rights you have the privileges for the for the online society digital society you have to work for that and this is the definition which is more appropriate which i thought i will you know uh, share with you it can be defined as norms of appropriate responsible behavior with the regard to the technically technology use right and this is what we are expected to do when we are part of the digital society okay so uh the pillars of uh, the cyber citizenship in the 21st century we have uh, you know the digital rights we talk of digital literacy we talk of digital communication we talk of digital ai that's the emotional intelligence we talk of the digital security we talk of digital safety we talk of digital use and digital identity okay. so these are the pillars which actually define the cyber citizenship and the number one goal of the digital citizenship is to teach teachers students parents 
as to what are the basics of the technology issue today, right? And it will be really helpful for all of us when we are using the digital, you know, platform to be very safe. And these nine elements practically, you know, uh, form the framework for the cyber citizenship. And uh, that's important to understand. So uh, what I'll do is I'll be, you know, telling about each one of them very briefly so that you understand what are the pillars of it and what are the rules of the cyber citizenship. So to give you an overview, it is the digital access when we talk of, it talks of the full electronic participation in society. So that's why we talk of the digital, you know, uh, reach. In our country also we talk of the digital reach to the uh, rural area, or, or urban rural area, class A cities, class B cities. So we, we are trying to give the access to everyone. We are giving, the second part is the digital commerce, which is about doing the you know, business online. That's what you see Flipkart, the Amazon, and to give the access to every part of the society, right? Digital communication, this about the electronic exchange of information using email system or the communication system. Digital literacy, this about the capacity building and learning about the technology, teaching and its use. Then comes the digital law, okay? And it is the electronic responsibility for action and beats what we do on the, you know, on the social, on, on the internet. Then are the digital rights and responsibilities, uh, and this accounts for those freedoms extended to everyone in the digital world. We also talk of digital health and wellness. So if people are aware of something, a new area which we talk of, the cyber psychology, right? So that is also something which we are being uh, talking of these days. So it talks of the physical and the psychological well being in the digital world. And we also talk of the digital security where we have the electronic precaution to guarantee, guarantee safety to all the users who are there. And last but not the least is the digital etiquette. This is about the electronic standard of conduct or procedures, right, which we have to follow. And when we talk of the digital citizenship, we also talk of the digital footprint. And if you really understand what the digital footprint is, I'll give you an example. Everybody, every one of us knows about Snapchat. Right? And uh, the hallmark of Snapchat is that the moment you put a data and anybody sees, uh, you know, that picture, what you're sharing, or the video, what you're sharing that gets deleted but unfortunately it doesn't happen so it's always there on the internet or the other thing is that anything which you're doing on the social media right it never gets you know away it's going to be there always and the nature of the digital footprint and their real life consequences are so very important right and we really have to manage it reasonably. And you are seeing a lot of things, you know, happening on on the social media today, on the internet, and it lands up into a litigation or a problem or a legal case, right? Then you have a digital empathy. And digital empathy is about ability to empathic, empathetically uh, think towards one's own and others' need and feeling online. Online. Right, you just can't be, you know, so harsh when you're writing, uh, not understanding what is the consequences of, uh, you know, what you're saying on the internet, the social media. So you have to respect the feeling of others. You have to be very empathetic, and the complete, you know, uh, when you are uh, typing or putting your messages on the network, on the internet. Then comes your, you know, ability to protect one data by creating strong passwords and to manage various cyber attacks. And you're seeing today, all the social media are so vulnerable that every time or every day you find some or the other 
the passwords getting you know stolen they are being sold in the dark net and uh, you know the very critical information gets lost so the cyber security management also plays a part of the cyber citizenship then which is more important to all the academies today and uh, you would also be you know uh, preview to most most of you must be preview to this the cyber bully and uh, i don't know how many of you uh, or how many of you, to, to how many of you would have students would have come and said that we are being cyber bullied unfortunately that number is pretty low but the number of cyber bullying happening today is almost 50% of the internet 50 to 60% so that is how it practically happens uh, and uh, you know its ability to detect the cyber bully situation and handle, handle them wisely so if you are not able to handle those situations you know the cyber bullying leads to suicides okay, by the by the kids by the teenagers something which is very important I, and i touched upon initially is the screen time management and i think this goes for everyone so especially for the teens it's the ability to manage one screen time it's uh, engagement time uh, online and it can only happen with the self control it cannot be enforced upon anyone if you try to enforce anyone it it bounces back okay and then comes your digital citizen identity right so like you have a identity card in your physical world you need to have a digital identity and it is all about ability to build and manage a healthy identity online and offline with integrity so you just can't say that you are a saint when it comes to you know the physical life but you are a rogue when you are there on the internet it can't happen so what you are cannot fake yourself on the internet but unfortunately the identity which is there in the physical life is totally different from uh, the online for most of the cases and i have seen it personally people tend to be rogues when it comes to the social media or the digital uh, platform right and the last point here is about uh, the privacy management that is all your personal information shared online should be handled with discretion and here i'll tell you a point while we try to you know safeguard our ourselves we you know we are online we try to be interactive with a lot of people uh, we want to engage with a lot of people but at the same time what is happening is if you people noticed it on 1st of february you know facebook changes its privacy policy and the privacy policy goes like this that we will we will keep on monitoring the all the applications or the banking applications which you will be using online or offline even when your facebook application is off okay so they are monitoring you even when you are sleeping or when you are not even using your facebook so how much is too much to monitor you right so the same thing which you find with google you have been monitored for your calls you have been monitored for uh, uh, for your uh, map uh, by through the map uh, other applications which are there so many things which are there right so the privacy management is so important and and if you remember uh, you know when the things of cambridge atlantica came up and the privacy issues really came up after the us election uh if you try to download the information what facebook is collecting you'll be surprised it is collecting all the information about your likes your friends your contacts your messages what's there in the phone what numbers are there in the phone and all the information from the day one one when you joined the facebook so the the privacy is a very sore topic 
when it is coming to uh, the internet or the digital society and that is what is the case when you know yesterday when india has banned all the 59 applications it's not that it's chinese the thing is that they are copying all the data data and taking it to china so that is again a problem and the bottom line of any cyber citizen is what you do when no one is watching you is very important and that defines your character like in normal life also your character is defined by your individual behavior in your attitude individual you know uh, upbringing and everything which is there some bit of uh, points i'll like to elaborate uh, i spoke of the digital access and the digital rights so uh, when we come to the indian scenario uh, when we spoke of the digital access it's the like kind of you know giving the access to all and as on today in india we have been able to give access to only 540 million out of 1.35 billion people right so this is still a uh, area which we need to grow on and huge potential in, in india and is the digital communication so around 88% of teens are using social media and they have witnessed someone being mean or cruel okay and while we are doing the digital communication it's so important that treat the others with respect online right and never never cyber bully okay so a point about the digital law so most of us we know that there are a lot of you know copying of data even in your education lot of plagiarism thing really comes up okay so it should be important that we should not steal data or damage others digital identity or property so legal rights and restrictions governing the technology use full electronic participation in society when it comes to your digital rights and responsibility this is about the privilege and the freedom extended to all digital technology users and the behavioral expectations that come with the law right and the legal rights and restrictions governing technology use and it makes more appropriate you know when the decisions are required uh, you know when we are using different technology and digital literacy digital literacy is is a capability to use the digital technology and knowing when and how to use it so we need to make people digitally enabled and that should be our you know mandate in times to come digital commerce uh, we are seeing uh, all the digital uh, uh, platforms uh, the e-commerce platforms you know trying to grow into the rural india part of it and that's a very pretty healthy sign when it comes to the digital commerce something on the digital security that's about the self protection uh, we have to have the you know the basic human rights which should, we should be able to uphold in the digital form okay and about the digital etiquette which i uh, brought in earlier uh, these are the standards of conduct ex 